Ruben, can you give us some detail on the tools that you use to maximize your strategies? All right, so at our disposal really is, is, is the various indexes that are available in developed and emerging markets. So an investor could come to us, for example, and say, I want you to track um, the Brazilian index, the Brazilian market. We would look at the structure of that index, look at the liquidity of that index, and then endeavor to track that index as closely as possible and at lowest possible cost. In South Africa, to use a local example, we would track the all share, which is the most representative sample of stocks available in the South African market. So all we're trying to do really is mimic um, the all share index, the total return of that all share index. And so at our disposal are the various components of that index, which really are the equities in that index. If, if there are bond indices that an investor would like us to track, then we would use the underlying bonds. Okay, so, and I must emphasize that the purpose of doing that, the purpose of tracking the index would be to provide the investor with exposure to the equity or bond index that he wants us to track at lowest possible cost. If we can focus for a moment on indexation, and I would really like to emphasize that, that indexation is really what we are about. It's, it's, it's our mantra and it was, it's what makes us unique. We don't have active funds, so we're not a fair weather indexer. This is, this is really what our business is all about. So as I indicated earlier, William Sharp, 50, 40 years ago, came up with this concept. It's proven to be correct. And the reason I say that is that if one looks at most developed markets and one looks at the actual returns, then indexed funds have outperformed almost 70% of active managers over time. This is a really important statistic because not only has the performance been very good, but it's been at lowest possible cost. And what investors need to recognize is that costs are the one thing, as Warren Buffett says, that are certain when it comes to investment and by minimizing cost you are in fact enhancing your returns. The other thing that is really complicated for the ordinary man in the street but for investors generally is that asset managers, active asset managers are not always persistent when it comes to their performance. So a manager who outperforms in one period may not necessarily outperform in a second period. So it's really complicated and difficult for a person to choose the manager who will outperform in a subsequent period. The index resolves that dilemma because the index constantly outperforms most active managers. So the index is unlikely to be number one at a point in time, but the index will definitely be towards the top of the second quartile in the first quartile over a 10 year period. So indexation has proven its worth, it's proven its worth in a number of developed markets and at Griffin we are very, very confident that the same will evolve in South Africa. It's not a concept that's taken off as quickly as we would have liked, but certainly over the past five years we've seen it growing in importance and more and more fund, more and more fund of fund managers, more and more private investors are in fact allocating funds to indexation. So, one must emphasize that while indexation is a passive asset management concept, it's not a passive decision for an advisor. An advisor makes an active decision by allocating funds to an index and indexed manager. He makes an active decision by advising his client to invest in an index solution. And as a result of that should be quite comfortable um, advising his client in this light and being remunerated for that advice.